A big mystery happened at sea in 1872. The Mary Celeste, a merchant ship, was found floating all alone in the Atlantic Ocean. Its sails were set just right, and everything on the ship looked normal. But something very strange and scary had happened. Every single person on the ship had disappeared. There was nobody left, and the ship's small boat was gone too. But inside the ship, it looked like the crew had just been there, with food still on the table. Detective James Hawkins was called to solve this puzzle. He was known for figuring out really tough cases. He always used facts and logic, and he never believed in ghost stories or curses. But when he stepped onto the Mary Celeste, he felt something weird and scary. He started his work by looking at the ship's log, a kind of diary for the ship. It showed everything was fine until a week before the ship was found. As he looked more into the ship, strange things started happening. Things moved on their own, and he heard quiet, spooky sounds at night. Hawkins really wanted to find a normal reason for all this. He found things that belonged to the crew, like clothes and letters, which told him about who they were. But the ship kept its secrets. The more Hawkins searched, the more he felt like someone was watching him. One night he saw something really scary. The crew looked like ghosts on the ship, pointing to a chest in the captain's room. Inside the chest, there was an old diary from the captain. It talked about a hidden treasure and a curse from long ago. Hawkins didn't really believe in such stories, but he decided to follow the clues. He found a secret place under the captain's room with a very old and strange thing. When he touched this thing, he saw visions of the crew's last moments. They had found this cursed thing, and it caused something terrible that made them all disappear. Hawkins was really scared, but he knew what he had to do. He threw the cursed thing into the sea. When it sank, the scary visions and sounds stopped. The Mary Celeste was just a normal, empty ship again. When Hawkins went back to land, he said the crew must have left the ship for reasons no one knows. But he kept the real story to himself, a story too strange and scary to tell. He left the secret of the Mary Celeste and the cursed thing that caused all the trouble deep in the ocean. A thick fog covered London. In December 1952, London was wrapped in a blanket of thick, deadly smog. It was like a monster made of fog and smoke covering everything. It was so heavy and dark that people couldn't see more than a few feet in front of them. This fog was strange and scary. It wasn't like normal fog that you see in the morning. It was black and dirty and it made it hard to breathe. People in London were confused and scared. They didn't know what this fog was or where it came from. It seemed to appear out of nowhere. It filled the streets, homes, and even buildings. Everyone was talking about it, trying to guess why it was so bad this time. But no one really knew. It was a mystery something that had never happened before. This fog was like a secret that the city itself was keeping, hidden in its thick, smoky cloak. This is the story of people from different parts of the city, their lives tangled together during those dark days. Alice, a young nurse, was working at a busy hospital in the heart of London. The smog made it hard to see, and breathing was a struggle for everyone, especially the sick. Each day, more and more people came in, coughing and gasping for air. Alice worked day and night, trying her best to help them, but the smog was like a villain, creeping into every corner of the hospital. Then there was Jack, a coal miner from the north who had come to London looking for work. He knew about smoke and dust, but this smog was like nothing he had ever seen. It stung his eyes and filled his lungs. He wandered through the city, lost in the fog, trying to find any kind of work so he could feed his family back home. Sarah, a school teacher, found herself trapped in her small apartment with her two young children. The schools were closed because of the smog. They had to keep the windows shut tight, but the foul air sneaked in anyway. Sarah told stories to her children, trying to keep them calm. But she was scared. The smog was a silent monster lurking outside their door. And there was Mr. Thompson, an old man who had lived in London all his life. He had seen the city through wars and hard times, but this smog was a different kind of enemy. It was silent and invisible. He remembered the cleaner air of his youth and shook his head at how the city had changed. 
Their stories were all different, but the smog tied them together. It was like a beast from a fairy tale, but this was no story. It was real and it was dangerous. People were getting sick, hospitals were overflowing, and nobody knew when it would end. The smog lasted for five long days. It was like a thick, dirty curtain had fallen over the city. When it finally lifted, it left a trail of sadness behind. Many people had gotten sick and some had even died. The city was quiet, as if it was morning. But from this tragedy, something changed. People started talking about how important clean air is. They didn't want to face this kind of monster again. Laws were made to control the smoke from factories and to use cleaner ways to heat homes. The Great London Smog of 1952 was a dark time, but it was also a time when people came together, helped each other, and learned a valuable lesson. It was a reminder of how strong and brave people can be and how even the worst disasters can lead to good changes. This story of survival, loss, and the resilience of the human spirit stays as a powerful memory in the heart of London's history. In the 1840s, a brave group of men led by Sir John Franklin set off on a daring journey. Their mission was to find the Northwest Passage, a secret path through the icy waters of the Arctic. They sailed from England with big dreams and hope in their hearts. But the Arctic was more dangerous and unforgiving than they ever imagined. As they sailed deeper into the icy world, the cold became a fierce enemy. The wind howled like a pack of wolves, and the freezing temperatures bit at their skin. The crew was tough, but the cold was tougher. Their ships, the HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, were strong, but the ice was stronger. It trapped the ships, holding them tight in its icy grip. Food and warmth became precious things. The crew had to fight for every meal as their supplies slowly ran out. The once strong and hopeful men started to feel weak and scared. They were lost in a world of white, where the sun barely rose and the night seemed to never end. As they struggled to survive, strange tales started to whisper among the crew. Tales of creatures lurking in the ice, watching them with glowing eyes. The Inuit, the people of the Arctic, had long spoken of mysterious spirits and monsters in the frozen lands. Some crew members laughed these stories off, but others weren't so sure. The endless night and the endless cold can make you see and hear strange things. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months. The once mighty expedition began to crumble. Some men left the ships, trying to find help or a way out of the ice. Others stayed behind, hoping for a miracle. But the Arctic showed no mercy. In the end, the exact fate of Franklin and his men remained a mystery. Some say they were swallowed by the ice, others that they were taken by the spirits of the Arctic. Their story became a legend, a tale of bravery and tragedy, a reminder of the power of nature and the mysteries that lie in the frozen heart of the world.